be 901. Um, we have, I'd like to um, first do a roll call, make sure that mics and everything are working. So uh, let me get the right paper up. So we'll do a roll call. Board Member Booth. Good morning. Thank you. Board Member Janet. Hi. Thank you. Board Member Klein. Board Member Klein. Board Member Davis. Good morning. Thank you. Board Member Earl. <coughs> Board Member Earl. We'll come back and check on that. Board Member Hansen. Morning. Board Member Hart. Yes. Board Member Hutchings. I'm here. Board Member Lear. No, she's trying to get on. Did she text somebody? This is Lorraine, yes, she texted me. She's trying to get on. Okay, thank you. Board Member Moss. Here, good morning. Good morning. Board Member Norton. Here, good morning. Thank you. Um, board Member Strait. Here. Okay, Board Member Earl. I'm here. Sorry, I stepped away for a minute. Thank you. Board Member Klein. Good morning. Okay, so, <coughs> sorry, hold on. <coughs> okay, so. I'm um, here, it's Board Member Lear. Oh, thank you, Carol. Thank you. So, first of all, we'd I'd like to read a statement that as authorized by Utah code 52-4, this meeting is being held electronically without an anchor location due to safety risks at the location where the public body would normally meet. We'd like to excuse today Chair Huntsman, Board Member Hymas, and Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones. Um, so we will move right into our uh, board member message. Um, board member Norton. Yes, that's me. Do we have a driver on that end? Is, is Jeff driving? I don't, I think so. Okay, my name is Kristen Norton and I am a board member who represents district 15, which includes Iron and Washington counties. I'm a classroom teacher in St. George where I teach fifth grade. Today, I want to share a portion of one of my favorite books that is also a book that my students found very entertaining. I have used this book to teach both language arts and visual arts. The title of this book is appropriately Zoom and it was illustrated by Istvan Banyer. Next slide, please. As we quickly look through each of these slides, be thinking about the elements of a story, character, setting, and plot. This first page is a clue to one of those elements. Next slide, please. As a reader, would you think that this rooster is a character or part of the setting? Do you have a better idea of the setting? Next slide, please. Maybe these are the main characters. Or is it still about the rooster? Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Are you starting to see why this book's title is Zoom? Next slide, please. Surprise! Using your background knowledge about the size of a hand and the size of a building, what can you infer? Next slide, please. Hmm. Next slide, please. Oh, what do we notice at the top right corner? Could that be foreshadowing another surprise? Next slide, please. Looks like it. Next slide, please. 
Have your thoughts changed about the setting, characters, and plot of this story? Next slide, next, blah, blah, blah. next slide, please. We're going to stop here. There are many more pages of twists and turns that will surely delight you, but I want to talk for just a minute about the illustrator's use of perspective. With each turn of the page, our view changed. We gained new insight and we were able to see a broader view. I grew up surrounded by athletics. As a byproduct of that culture, I'm very familiar with ESPN. Next slide, please. The other day I was driving to work and I was listening to Mike Greenberg. Greeny, as he is best known to sports fans, was talking about growing up in New York. He did well in school, was a happy kid, and loved pretty much every part of his life, except he had one thing he really, really, really hated. It was his nemesis, something he found despicable, his number one arch enemy. It was, next slide please, the Boston Celtics. He hated the Celtics. Next slide please. And he really hated their players. Guys like Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, ugh, Danny Ainge, and Dennis Johnson. But then, Greeny said, he grew older. And he grew up. He actually got to know several of these players very well and found out what great guys they really were. He had opened up his view, allowed new information in, and it changed his perspective. Next slide, please. Perspective is a nimble word that can be used in a variety of different scenarios, but I especially like the definition highlighted in yellow. Perspective is the capacity to view things in their true relations or relative importance. As many of you know, the election cycle can be very tough, but there were many silver linings to the dark cloudy days. One for me was a quote from an acquaintance of mine who was also a candidate for political office. She said, there's a reason you were given two ears and one mouth. Use them in that proportion. Listen twice as much as you talk. The last portion of my presentation was also given to me during the election cycle by a friend and advisor who also serves as a board member on a different board. It is a poem, excuse me, it's a poem by Margaret Wheatley entitled Turning to One Another. There is no power greater than a community discovering what it cares about. Ask what's possible, not what's wrong. Keep asking. Notice what you care about. Assume that many others share your dreams. Be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. Talk to people you know. Talk to people you don't know. Talk to people you never talk to. Be intrigued by the differences you hear. Expect to be surprised. Treasure curiosity more than certainty. Invite in everybody who cares to work on what's possible. Acknowledge that everyone is an expert about something. Know that creative solutions come from new connections. Remember, you don't fear people whose story you know. Real listening always brings people closer together. Trust that meaningful conversations can change your world. Rely on human goodness and stay together. As we close out this Zoom, period of our board history and come together later this month, it is my hope that we can truly listen to one another. We can value the different perspectives that we all bring to this table, that we can learn about one another and the extreme diversity that shapes our hearts and minds, that this diversity can be the catalyst to create an even better educational system for the state of Utah and for our children. 
Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this message. And I look forward to meeting all of you in, per in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank if, you. We, if we could applaud loudly, we would. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time. I love that Zoom. That was actually very fun. I haven't seen that book. <clears throat> A great okay. book. Thank you so much, Board Member Norton. Okay, we will move on to our education highlight. Jeff, are you going to introduce this? And <clears throat> before Jeff does, just a reminder, board members, this is just a presentation and it's not a question answer time for the, for the board. It's a presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Jeff Van Holten, Director of Public Affairs here for the State Board of Education. Excited to be here today on this beautiful June morning and excited to introduce you to Joe Backman, who's here. He's going to share with you some exciting things that are happening in Alpine School District with math. I'm always excited when we can get excited about math. So I'm going to toss it over to Joe and uh, Jerry. If you could give Joe Backman um, screen sharing rights, he has a, a PowerPoint. Good morning. Thank you so much, Jeff. And each of you, thank you so much for having us. We're really honored to be here. Um, as my, uh, okay, here we go. Share my screen. I first want to just recognize our district math team that's also on this uh, Zoom with us and our district leadership and their incredible support as well as Shannon Olson, the math team and the STEM Action Center who've been a huge support to us in our uh, mathematics here in Alpine. I also just wanna thank each of you board members. Uh, my grandpa, uh, LeGrand Pollard Backman was the board president in Utah for 20 years uh, at the state. And I am grateful for each of you and the, the incredible work and sacrifice that you do to lead and serve education here in Utah. I wanna start, oh, sorry. I wanna start with a video um, about math. I want you to reflect maybe on your own experience with math as you were growing up and also of a child, your child, a grandchild, a neighbor, anyone who you love as you watch this video. How do you feel about math? I'm not good at math. I just don't get it. It makes me kind of feel uncomfortable. When I get called on in math class, I feel scared because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up the problem. My brain just doesn't think anymore, doesn't think straight, and I just, just go like, okay, what do I do? I have no idea what to do. Math makes me feel stupid. Scared that I would answer wrong or get laughed at. I'll never be able to do this. Scene 16, take one, marker. I'm still learning who I am, but I'm good at forming my idea of my own potential. And if I think I can't be good at math, I won't be. But math is everywhere. Math is a basic life skill. Without math, I can get left behind. So help me know that limits don't exist. That math isn't beyond my reach. And my potential can take me anywhere. That with hard work and the right mindset, I can grow. Because math esteem is self-esteem. With math, I can be a fashion designer, a doctor, a computer programmer, a wildlife biologist, a teacher. With math, I can be anything. And find out how you can implement growth mindset strategies to improve your students' math esteem. So I can have a fighting chance to become who I want to be. I love that video. And board member Norton, thank you for your uh, great message. I love what you said about perspective. I love this quote from Dr. Shelley Jones. Uh, it is time to redefine what it is that we want students to know and be able to do in mathematics. During the pandemic, we have seen and talk about a lot of the, the learning loss. And we've questioned here, what does that learning loss mean? And this is a perfect time to redefine and have a different perspective of what math and what learning really is. In Alpine, this is our vision for learning. 
We desire that all of our students acquire the essential knowledge, skills, and dispositions. Those are the things we want them to know, to be able to do, and especially what we want them to be or to become. In Alpine, this is how we define that in mathematics. Uh, this is our vision for learning mathematics, helping students to truly feel empowered to learn mathematics, that they have the knowledge, deep content knowledge, but also that they have these skills and these practices that they can make sense of problems, that they can reason, that they can productively struggle and persevere through whatever problems come their way, as well as their math identity. I love that video of the math esteem. Um, students need that esteem and to be able to be successful. So the learning loss is not just the knowledge piece. Absolutely, we know we need to do things there, but let's take this opportunity to redefine, to even disrupt what's happened with traditional math and really look at how we can help students to have that deep math esteem and their practices and their uh, work. Our work really is focused on having more productive beliefs as it comes to mathematics. The unproductive beliefs are much more around the line of a teacher is the authority, they disseminate knowledge, students be quiet, memorize, just do the algorithm, probably what you experienced as you grew up, that traditional approach. Whereas this productive beliefs is much more focused on the students, helping them to think, to empower them to be problem solvers, to reason that they are collaborating their thinking. And if they do that, they'll learn instead of just being told what they need to, to learn there. To measure our, our work here in our professional learning, um, the STEM Action Center has really helped us with a lot of uh, the grant money to be able to pay for our summer professional learning and throughout the school years. And we did a survey last year to measure the teacher's beliefs about teaching and learning mathematics and to see if they were more aligned with those productive beliefs, more of a student-centered focus, or if they were continuing their, their beliefs about uh, more of a teacher-centered focus. We partnered with BYU and did some uh, both statistical and qualitative analyses of these surveys. And as you can see here, we saw some pretty significant growth in teachers' beliefs about teaching and learning mathematics in much more of a student-centered way. You can see the grade level teachers, but also coaches, special ed teachers, and even our arts and PE and specialty teachers, they're significantly growing in a more productive student-centered approach to teaching mathematics. The teacher-centered, where again, that teacher is the authority, they just disseminate knowledge. You have to learn this, be quiet type thing. Um, we want to see those decrease. And like the last slide, all of these are statistically significant, showing that they are not by chance. And seeing that those are declining uh, significantly was uh, incredible to see in our district and just some of the great results that we saw. 14 of our 62 elementary schools have really gone after this vision for learning math deeply. And part of that, we've utilized the iReady and the diagnostic here shows window one was back in September, the beginning of the school year, and the most recent was captured in April. And to bring this alive a little bit more, just wanna highlight these, those students, an individual student that's in this red is either two or more grade levels below, significant need. And we saw throughout this school year that two out of every three students we're able to move up to higher levels of performing and understanding in mathematics. That is huge. You can just imagine what that does for an individual student to help change and even bless their life and the trajectory. On the other end, those students that are in that green, it's either grade level or above grade level, uh, we saw that more than triple um, over this year as we really went after, after helping students to converse and to talk and to share and to learn together and seeing great results there. This next year, all 62 of our elementary schools are really going to be pursuing our vision for learning math. And we look forward to those further uh, results there. I wanna end with one more video. This is, uh, these are principals, teachers, and students from our district. 
uh, as well as um, some of our support to partnerships that we've had and just hope you enjoy. These are the proof in the pudding, the people that have been on the ground running with this incredible work. When you're collaborating, you hear everyone's ideas. And um, if you didn't have a great idea, or you thought yours was great, but then you can add something on from someone else's idea and it will make it better. But there's like a little problem that I don't get. I can collaborate with my friends to solve it. We started to notice a shift in how kids talked about math, not just during math time, but on the playground. And it wasn't just things like, what did you get on the math quiz? It was in-depth discussion about what a student's answer had been or um, why maybe they disagreed with something that had happened, especially in our language learners. Uh, this way of teaching math makes sense. And it to kids, it makes sense. And they are getting a deeper level of understanding and it's improving their academic language. It's improving their ability to perform in other content areas. It's building their confidence. Classrooms are a safe place to make mistakes and to talk about mistakes and to understand why it was a mistake and how to do it differently. And we have loved it. And we're seeing huge growth. As a school, we averaged over 104% typical growth. We saw in our second year, um, sixth grade has more than doubled. They have 210% of their students reaching that adequate growth. We have a, a language learner who began the year on the diagnostic at a second grade math level. He is now um, at an end of year fifth grade math level. So huge. He's been at, he's had an IEP since he was in first grade. Uh, and he sees himself as a math learner now. I didn't understand something and they, I got in a group and they helped me out and I understand it now. I've been very impressed with the work going on in Alpine about and the comprehensive nature of your vision for learning mathematics. In fact, I've already shared it with a couple of districts that I've been working with as really an exemplary model of thinking about how to frame the work of a district around mathematics. You know, So all I can say is the work you're doing is really exciting and it's really important work for your students. And I only wish you the best. Even though if the problem might be hard, you gotta persevere and keep thinking about it. So one of the things I am excited about happened just last week as I was out on um, bus duty at the end of the day. Um, you know, kids are all over and walking and I overheard these two sixth graders walking towards me and one of them said something about, yeah, you know, math, I just, I didn't used to like math, but I really like it now. Something about just the way our teacher does it, I'm just really liking it. And they were just having this informal conversation and I overheard it as they passed me, but it made my heart so happy because... Here's these sixth grade boys talking about math and liking it at the end of the day. So that was really exciting. That was a big win. I would invite everyone to really examine their beliefs of what they think kids are capable of doing. Kids are capable of doing a lot more than you think. Give them the chance to show that they're mathematical thinkers and they will surprise you. Are you a mathematician? Yes. My teacher asked me to do a problem. I do it and I and if I fail, I try to get the right answer after. We can do team stuff together. So if I don't get the right answer, they can help me get the right answer. I hope that this message uh, has been compelling to you. Uh, this is my baby girl. She's a year and a half years old, uh, graduating in 2038. Can you imagine the opportunities that she'll have as well as the challenges that she may face in her lifetime? I hope that we continue to help students across our, our state uh, to really learn that they are capable of learning the knowledge, the skills, and the dispositions. I love the work that's happening with the portrait of a graduate uh, that captures the whole child. And I love the work happening here in Utah. And we thank you for your support. Thank you for the STEM Action Center and the, the monies that come to us uh, for professional learning, for the personalized learning grants and so forth. We just really appreciate all of your support and uh, thank you for this time.
Uh, thank you, Dr. Backman or Director Backman. Um, I, we really appreciate it. And if there was applause to be had, you would be hearing it now. So thank you so much for your efforts. So yeah, you see the hands that they're doing their best. It's not loud. So thank you so much. We will move on now to um, employee recognition and turn the time over to Dr. Dixon. Good morning, everybody. I think we will start with uh, Michelle Watts and introduce our wonderful new employees. Good morning, I'm Michelle Watts. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Well, I will be introducing the new employees for the month of May, 2021. First new employee, Rachel Coolidge. She's an education leadership specialist from Mill Creek, Utah, and her previous work was special ed literacy specialist for Granite School District. Katie Kremholtz, she's an office specialist, early learning. She's from Denver, Colorado, and previously was a BYU student. Dejana Karabajovic from Bosnia-Herzegovina. She's a financial aid advisor, previously from the University of Utah, and now is an office specialist with us. And Jessica Kajar, CARES Administrative Assistant from Tennessee and previously worked as a Judicial Assistant to Judge Nieder at the Utah State Courts. Welcome to these new employees. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, and welcome to our new employees. Dr. Dixon? Yes, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Bill Knapp. And I, I'm always so impressed with these great employees who come during a pandemic, and it's nice to be back in the office and, and meet them face to face. So welcome to our wonderful new employees. And this month, we are highlighting Laura Lee Gillespie as our employee of the month. I loved her nomination so much. Uh, Laura Lee is a new coordinator over the UPIPS program, which um, stands for the um, it's Utah Special Education, but Utah Program Improvement Planning System. And you hear us refer to it as UPIPS all the time, so I want to make sure everybody knows what it is. And this is a program where uh, it involves a lot of monitoring and a lot of technical assistance and support. So it's all hands on deck and really time intensive. And Laura Lee has been nominated by her employees. I just, it, it's a beautiful nomination form, but I, I wanna just pop out one thing. Um, the employee who nominated her said, I've grown more personally and professionally while working for Utah State Board of Education the last two years than I have almost my whole career. And working feels fun, exciting, and enjoyable. Under Laura Lee's leadership, we've made a lot of changes to monitoring with a lot more work to do, but all of the changes made me feel like we're moving in the right direction and it's exciting. Monitoring with LEAs has been extremely positive this year, even in the light of COVID-19. And we have a lot of LEAs who have, ex who have expressed excitement to learn through the process. This is a big accomplishment and it's not easy to get LEAs excited about having our team in their buildings doing monitoring. So there's a whole list of things that Laura Lee has been working on, but um, I'm, I want to punctuate one because I've noticed this about Laura Lee. Um, her communication skills are fantastic. If there are things that are discussed that will impact our team or require action, then the expectations are very clear. Why it's expected, what is expected, how it will impact the work we do and the work of the LEAs. So um, Laura Lee is a new coordinator and she has just leaned in with enthusiasm and grace and kindness. And I wanna be like Laura Lee when I grow up. She's an awesome employee and we're really um, thrilled to be able to highlight her. And I don't know if she is on this morning to wave to you, but if not, I hope you will get to know uh, Laura Lee, our coordinator over UPIPS. Congratulations, Laura Lee. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. I'm just wondering if you still give a parking spot because there are no parking spots. Just kidding. That's it's well, her, 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 we do. It's closer to the building, <laughs> but it's dug up right now. So she has a good dirt parking spot if she wants to four wheel it up into her parking spot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I also, since we're kind of under recognition for a minute, I just wanted to take a minute and say that Sybil and Lorraine will be working together today. This will be Sybil's um, first time um, working on taking all the notes and Lorraine will remain our parliamentarian for today. So we thank them for working together. 